about the Swasaniga baby mama drama. We know that uh, New York just passed same sex marriage. And so many of who is saying who I find you? <laughs> These are some of the topics. Who, the, whoever is saying who there, if it's a man that is sitting beside that man, <laughs> cover your body with the blood of Jesus. <laughs> now, let me tell you. Some of them are Now, now let, let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. You know, there are some things that happen that we as Nigerians, Keep surprising us. No matter how many years I spent in America, things like that will surprise me. Especially the Swazi, you know, the one that fits me most is the Swazi that baby mama. Okay, so what? He has a baby from his little wife, 10 years, then from his house cell, that is 10 years. That is nothing new under the sun. It is expected. Now, can't you see Swazi? He's a bodybuilder for God's sake. That guy has no idea. Look at his wife. I'm not saying it's legal, but see, this is that you don't have to. Come out and do a public apology and everything. Then do you know how many public apologies my father will have done? <laughs> Let me tell you, as far as I can remember, I was my father's second child. But by age seven, he just come and say, Shay, you are no longer the second one. <laughs> Before I met your mom, uh, it happened. So now you are number three, just take it like that. <laughs> and we just say, okay, daddy, you're the man, you know, you do it. When I was starting again, my position changed again. He called me again, Shane, you are still my first son, but not my third one again. You have met your mom. Something happened again, and now you are the fourth. Eh? Just like, and I'm like, okay, as long as I'm still the first one, I was happy to keep my position as the first son. No drama. But now, the wife said, oh, I'm going to divorce him. Okay, fine. He will remind me. Have another house help. Probably have another child. Does that make any sense? My mother had five kids in five years. My father still had two outside, and they are still together to the glory of the Lord. So I don't understand all this. Please, let's give African women a big round of applause. They go through a lot. Yeah. You know what our mothers have gone through. So, you know, coming here has made me just, you know, appreciate my mother the more. You know, that's why every day, Mother's Day, if I don't even wait till Mother's Day, every day I just appreciate her the more. Our mothers are there. They wait because of us. They say, no, I won't leave for my kids' sake. You know, these are lessons we need to learn as African women. You know, the men too are trying. Things we carry in our body for 30 years, women will carry it for nine months and the whole house will not rest. The baby you are carrying in your body for six months. We have been carrying in our body for 30 years. Nothing happened. Eh? Look at me. There's baby in my body, but you see? Can you do that pregnant woman? Can you do it? Fine. Inside there. Oh, you nine months. Ah, oh, sweet. Paper in the morning. Take it easy, oh. You don't complain about that. America. And all of a sudden, the police just came. As in Nigeria, fresh. You just bring me past a green card. You really have saw the police car say, wow, deportation. <laughs> My mom was like, wow, next next road to go. <laughs> you know, they just said, ah, 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 hi, are you okay? You know, the policeman, I was like, expecting to just say, yes, you're under arrest, you're going. Are you okay? I said, okay, no! <laughs> go again, I am not going anywhere. Under two minutes, they gave me, oh, even if I didn't need it, I started bringing me, I said, I put me in the van. Five like, yeah, are you okay? I go to the hospital asking all sorts of questions, you know? But let me tell you, you know you can't lie to American police. They don't smile when they are asking you questions. Oh, Mr. Brown. I said, yeah. <laughs> now we want you to tell us exactly how it happened without smiling. I tried to do the Nigerian thing. Oh, Mr. How you doing now? <laughs> tell us exactly how it happened. I look in his eyes. I told you, you know, let me tell you, there's a way American people will look in your eyes. You will tell them what they ask you. <laughs> After I told him that I was at fault, and I even told him that, you see, even when I look out this morning, I'm going three tickets. I rest me for that too. You will not be confessing. That's what I love about the American system. Now, if you are involved in an accident in Nigeria, three things will happen. It's either that the first person to arrive is a Yoruba. An ego or an outsider, I will analyze what will happen. 
Now, if the first person that I arrived at the scene of that accident is a Yoruba man or woman, you will die. <laughs> you know why? Us Yoruba people have this tendency of lamenting and not doing anything. Can I see somebody? Who says, ah!
Will you marry me? I'm only for money, take marry person. <laughs> take this we say, Ah, oh, thank God. Oh. We have been waiting, thank God you made Jali came. Was it monthly payments? We have been there too, my father is waiting for you. <laughs> or breaking up. Yes, sir. Uh, Jane, I'm sorry, it's not working out. I think we have to go our separate ways. Thank you very much and enjoy your flight. It will be approximately two hours, 30 minutes. In those days, this is what you hear. Before you take off, no announcement. It is when you are in the air, you will not take your feet. And yes, oh, how are they? We hope that you are sensible enough to switch off your phone. Because it will interfere with our flight and it might make us to crash. So if I'm not done that, well, it's too late. And um, if you think that uh, you can just give any hour, you will do any hour. You know why? This is the oldest plane in the country, 80 years. That's right, three times, and it's still flying. Well, is there any guarantee that it won't crash tonight? We cannot guarantee you. So what we'll tell you is that if they're Christian, Call on Jesus. If you're a Muslim, call on Allah. If you don't believe in God, you're your own. <laughs> Nobody will teach you. And I hear that in Delta State, in Warren. There you are! There you are! Any 
anybody that says, hey, move away from them. They have the anointing to make you disappear. Especially if your complexion is lighter. The money cannot be the money. It is only in that city that I hear that Delta says they have a new airline. And I flew from Warwick to Lagos. Do you know that normally when you fly, you press a button when you need anything, and the air officers will come, or they call them flight attendants. Try it in Delta Airlines, that's what you want. You just press. Ding dong! The annoyance that the flight attendant came with. <laughs> Who pressed that thing? I was even afraid to answer. <laughs> Me. You want spoiler? <laughs> you just saying I knew one. What do you want? Uh, I want one. You know, drink come up for us. <laughs> they go so free, but I can play up and I go share what want to. If you like, no drink up. Don't press that button again. <laughs> Don't even track them. Flying in Nigeria is a whole different experience. But then go to Ireland. Now we can fly with peace of mind. So fly Arik, ladies and gentlemen. Arik is very good. It is only on Arik they will show American movie, Nigerian movie, Chinese, Indian. Are they allowed? Fly Arik. Arik is very good. Arik, they have been by Taco, Bonobo, or the Fogu Gasly spread. Even in the economy, they have spread today. Are they allowed? But you see, Arik Airlines is very good for you. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause. All the Nigerian events, you are the movie premiere in LA, that's for the tourist movie. So all the Nigerian events we've been having, we had the movie premiere, the Nigerian reunion last year, it was there, they were supporting us. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you very much. And please, all of us, don't know me to say, but fly Arik. Jokes are just fly Arik. A trial will confuse you. Convince you. Or in any way, do something to you. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to talk about Nigerian police. Now, now, you guys have a negative impression, but it's not so. It is as a result of you know the fact that you know we have we are multicultural. I mean, you know that in Nigeria, if you are the son of a military personnel, you are a little bit above the law. You know, when you get to checkpoint, you say, "I'm the son of a captain." I thought they say, "Oh." Okay, you can go. So one of my friends, his father is like an admiral in the Navy. So his father puts him in the nose so that anytime we get to the checkpoint, he's not sort of to whom it may concern. Chevy, I thought that guy is my son, let him go. So anytime we get to any checkpoint, just show that. Okay, all right, you can go. Unfortunately for us, one day we went to a checkpoint. This policeman, they just got there from the northern part of the country. As they say, hey, stop, stop, hold it. Fight them. Are you in the place? So we fight. So yeah, show me your papers! Boy, brother, do not give a concern. Get yeah, sorry. Tabo. We are concerned. <laughs> Waiting concern me for this one. He went to me. Abdul, I concern you. He said, I don't concern me. Correct. Check it. I concern you. I don't concern me. That was what he said. Fuck! Fuck! Police you today. Now, what I love about American police is that they will respect you until you find yourself in jail. <laughs> this one here. Woo, 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 woo. Hello, bro. Wait, bro. Sir, registration of license, please. You bring it up. Do you know why I stopped you, sir? We were going about the state limits. Sir, you'll have to come with us to the station. Here we sign you. Yes, let's go. <laughs> um, sir, since you obey the law, we'll have to lock you up. I like the way you're respecting me. Lock me up, my man. <laughs> It is not that they will not be allowed to come out. They will respect you. And you will not read your right. Like, Sir, you have a right to go. Me. You too. Sir, you have a right to remain silent. Everything you, use, you say will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You know your rights. Try me in Lagos. You say, now, you have bothered me. I need my lawyer. I need my rights. You want your rights? Copra, give me this right. 
You see what you're right, sir? Please don't be wrong. Now, there are three levels of slap. The first one is police slap. When police slap you, you will know that it's a big slap because of your salary. <laughs> when police slap you, hey! you can smile and say, Guy, who slap that? Who slap me back? But when Mopo slap you, bah! you by yourself, you'll be explaining. Oh, God, you see me, I plan. I plan. You see me, I wonder. I wonder. Why you don't slap me now? Mopo is good. Let soldier slap you. Army slap, Navy or Air Force. When they slap you, You will look for somebody to explain to you. <laughs> it's a big idea. I plan. It's a big idea. I wonder. I wonder. Is he going to slap me? If there's nobody to explain to you, you will look for a new one. Is he going to slap me? I plan. Is he going to slap me? I don't know why. That is why I disagree with the white people that. The eclipse of the sun comes once in 25 years. I used to see mine every week. <laughs> every time my mother slapped me, BAM! Every time I saw BAM! Every time I saw Every eclipse of anything fighting is not the same for us. Have you never had that experience? But there is one experience I want to share with you. There's something we call Koboko. Now, for those of you who don't know what Koboko is, Koboko is us with people. Now, horse whip is the kind of cave that before it lands on your body, you hear the sound. Before it lands. As a result of the sound, your spirit will leave your body. Allow you to enjoy the pain. So once it lands, you will open your mouth, but sound will not come out. After 10 seconds, your spirit will go back. The sound will go ah! It's what we call delayed reaction. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands up for Nigeria. We can find it a while. And obtain it. And that is the sweet thing about marriage. Now, let me tell you something. In America, when couples marry, they bear the same name from the, same, from the day they marry, so they die. If the day you marry, your husband is honey, and the wife is sweet, is honey, sweet. When they have kids, honey, sweet, till they die, honey, sweet. It is only in Nigeria that your name changes with events in the family. <laughs> when you marry this, Shadow Koko, Shadow Koko. When they have kids, Baba Beji, Baba Beji, Baba Beji, Baba Beji. When they don't grow, Daddy Wa, Mommy Wa, Daddy, the change, change. I went to see an uncle of mine, 89. His wife, 88, he been married for 50 years. And to my amazement, he was still using words of a dear for his wife. When we were eating on the table, he was like, Sugar, can you pass me this sugar? <laughs> uh, honey, can you pass me the honey? Uh, coconut. Pass me the coconut rice. <laughs> so after I went there, I was like, when the wife went to the kitchen, she said, Uncle, after 50 years, how can you do this? Not the wife. I looked at her, she took it's not that easy. You know, I'm 85. Three years ago, I forgot my wife's name. That's why I'm using all those up. Give Nigerian 